Yo, what's going on everybody? This is Rockin' here. Welcome back to a brand new video. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to colour correct your Valorant clips. Of course this works with other games as well. You don't have to just do it in Valorant, but I'm going to show you how to do it with Valorant clips. In this video I'm going to be going through the free method using no plugins, no add-ons, no scripts, no nothing like that. Just bog standard After Effects. I do have another tutorial on my channel which you can see on screen right now. Click the link in the top right corner and in that tutorial I use a plugin called Magic Bullet Look. So if you have that plugin then make sure to go check out that tutorial. Otherwise if you don't, I would rather do the free method than continue watching. Just before we get started, I'd like to say I've made several other tutorials all revolving around Valorant and gaming editing in general. If you'd like to check out any of them, there's a playlist in the top right corner of the video right now, linked in the description as well, and it will contain all of my tutorials on After Effects and Premiere Pro in regards to editing, as well as a few Blender tutorials in there as well. Also, make sure to follow me on my socials, my Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at RocklandVL. And without any further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is open up a brand new After Effects project or just go into the one that you've already created with the rest of your editing which I presume you would have already edited all your clips and now you want to just color correct them if you haven't then obviously you follow along with what I'm doing and basically all I'm going to do is just drag and drop my clip in and as you can see it's over here and I'm just going to make a new composition at the resolution of my clip as well as the frame rate so mine's 2560 by 1440 at 60 fps and the duration is 30 seconds doesn't matter how long that is you can reduce it or increase it later if you need to and I'm going to hit ok and now all I'm going to do is drag my clip onto the timeline ok so all you want to do now is find a point in your clip which is sort of a general representation of what the rest of the clip's going to be like so you just going to want to try and find some sort of reference frame that we'll be using to apply our colour corrections to and then we'll go back through the clip later on and make sure that it looks good throughout the entire thing so the kind of frame you're going to want to be looking for is one uh, during a gunfight or something like that when you're in the main action of the clip. So I'm just going to scroll through and try and find the point that I think looks good. Okay, so I found a frame that I'm happy with. You've got a pretty general representation of what's going on. You've got obviously the gun in frame, you've got light parts, you've got dark parts, you've got smokes, things like that. Just a variety of things on screen so that you can see what sort of color corrections need to be done or basically just get a general overview of what the color correction is gonna look like on the rest of the clip. And now all we're gonna do is create a new adjustment layer. You can do that by pressing Control, Alt and Y and that's gonna make a brand new adjustment layer. Alternatively, you can right click, hit new and then adjustment layer. Now I'm gonna to come to the adjustment layer right click hit rename and just call it cc and basically any clip that's below this cc is going to have the color correction applied to it next thing you should do is make sure that the preview resolution is at full that way you'll get an accurate representation of what the frame actually looks like and then you're going to come here and you'll see this little camera button it says take snapshot you're going to click that you'll hear the little camera sound and that's going to be a reference image so that we can look back at it later so for example if i was to drag somewhere later in the clip okay so now all we're going to do is start applying our effects to our cc adjustment Layer. So the first one I recommend you use is called Lumetri Color and basically that's just going to be a ton of effects all built into one and I'll show you how that works. So you're going to come over to effects and presets and search for Lumetri just like this you'll see Lumetri Color and it's going to drag and drop it onto your adjustment layer. I have the Video Copilot effects console installed so all I do is click on the layer press control space and then I can search for Lumetri in here just like that and I can click that if you want to link to that plugin it's completely free I'll leave it in the description and now you'll see the Lumetri color is applied to our adjustment layer so all you want to do now is come down to basic correction and in here the first option you'll see is input LUT so what a LUT is is a lookup table I'll put on screen what they look like and they're used for color grading and they're quite useful to have as a starting point for your color correction so if you come over here you'll see none and you can just sort through these different LUTs and each one's going to give a different sort of color grade to your to your clip now these ones I believe are the default presets that come with After Effects but I will leave a link in the description to where you can download a bunch more free ones so you can just try these out and get a good base for your image. I'm actually not going to bother with a LUT for this tutorial but if you want to some LUTs are good enough that you can just chuck them on and that would be your color correction done. However I'm going to go through every individual effect and teach you what to do uh, when it comes to creating your own. So underneath that you'll see the white balance. I wouldn't recommend touching any of this. You can do if you like. The tint especially is quite nice in some occasions it will make pink if you drag it up to the right and make it green if you drag it to the left. However, I like to do any colouring later on. And down under tone you've got exposure which basically adjusts the brightness of the image or the exposure of the image obviously. And then underneath that you've got the contrast which obviously is the contrast of the image so you're going to get deeper blacks and brighter, brighter highlights. And then under that you've got the highlights which obviously increases the intensity of the highlights and the shadows which increases the intensity of the shadows. Then you've got whites, which will basically brighten the image, and you've got blacks, which will sort of darken the image. 
So all I'm going to do now is go through all of these different effects and play with them a little bit to get to a point that I'm happy with. So I think for this clip I'm going to want to bump the exposure up slightly as well as the contrast. I'll just go up a little bit. You're going to want to try and make minor adjustments to begin with um, as, as you layer the different effects on top of each other it's going to get more and more intense and depending on how, how intense you like your CCs depends on how much you want to adjust these. But to start off with I'm just going to go for minor adjustments and then come back and tinker with it later on. So I think I'm going to drag up the highlights a little bit as well the shadows i think if i drag that down a little bit as well that looks quite good something like that and i'm going to leave the whites and blacks as they are next up is saturation so i'm just going to drag that up a little bit and it's just going to brighten the colors like this i think i'm going to go for something like 120 really don't want to overdo the saturation maybe even slightly less than that i'll go for 115 and then we can close the basic corrections now comes creative which is going to give you a bunch more effects to choose from here you can see the look and basically there's a bunch more presets in here as well which you can click through and it's going to make adjustments to your image similar to how the LUTs work but again I'm not going to bother with any of these and then down here you'll see adjustments like faded film, sharpen, vibrance and saturation. We've already adjusted the saturation so I'm not going to bother with that. Faded film I don't really like that but if you like the look of it or if it suits your edit then obviously go for it. I like to drag the sharpness up a little bit to something like 10-ish and the vibrance up a little bit as well to something sort of like 15 something like that as well. I'm going to leave the saturation because I've already played with that and then down here you'll have these two wheels where you can adjust the shadow and highlight in now here is where i would go about color grading my image so for example in a clip like this i want to go for a slightly more pinkish tone so i'm going to go for something just by dragging this up something sort of like this up with the pinks and reds something like that and the shadows i'm going to sort of do a similar thing something sort of like that as well and then we can come down to curves now for me after effects bugs if i try and touch any of these settings so you'll see here it does something like this and i believe that's because i'm on a graphics driver that's not supported by this version of after effects so i updated my graphics drivers and this suddenly started happening so i do need to roll and back my graphics drivers and i'll do that at some point but i haven't quite got around to it yet so instead what i'm going to do is apply these effects down here individually as they all as they all do the same thing with the glitchiness so we can add all of these individually and of course if any of you guys have this problem then you can copy what I'm doing as well. So now I've done our basic corrections and creative corrections we're going to move on to our curves. Now obviously like I just showed you the curves don't work for me so I'm going to come over to effects and presets I'm going to search for curves and I'm going to drag it on or you can use the plugin like I said earlier and search for it down here and all I'm going to do is just a basic S shape so I'm going to drag up here in the bottom left of this first square up slightly and I'm going to drag down here in the top right of this bottom square down slightly and you'll see if I disable it and re-enable it you can see what sort of effect that's had on the clip and I think that looks 10 times better and now if you want to make certain colors slightly more vibrant you can adjust them here individually so for example if I wanted to increase the reds in the highlights I could drag this up like this if I wanted to increase it in the shadows I can drag it up like this so I think I'm going to go for a slightly more redder image I'll go for the mid-tones and just drag that up and just drag that up ever so slightly as you can see it makes a massive difference so i think something like that looks cool and that's it for curves okay so next up on the list of the effects that we can apply to our clip is a blur now in magic bullet looks they give you the ability to blur the edges sort of in like a vignette shape so i'm going to do the exact same thing on this as i think that looks quite good and in order to do that you can't apply that to the adjustment layer instead you're going to come down to your clip and you're going to duplicate it by pressing ctrl d and then you're going to come to the the clip on top and you're going to apply a gaussian blur so i'm going to search for Gaussian blur you'll see here Gaussian blur not the legacy version the normal version and we're going to bang the blurriness up a little bit to something like I think that looks good around nine ish something like that and you'll see it's made the whole thing blurry now what you're going to, want to do is come up here to the shape tool and you're going to click this and hold it and then come down to the ellipse tool and click somewhere in the top left corner and drag it all the way to the bottom right corner something sort of like this and try and get the the edges relatively even with the other ones and let go and you'll see now we've got this sort of blur in the middle and it's sharper on the edges. What we're going to want to do now is just tick invert and now you'll see around the edges of the clip if I zoom in up here for example you can see it's blurred and then it goes um, into focus. This is quite a intense line right here so if I hide the bottom layer you'll see what that's basically done and that's what it's done and it's just revealed the layer below. So what I want to do is add a bit more of a feather to the mask so I'm just going to hit the down arrow next to the mask here and increase the feather just like this to get more of a a blur like that and then when I add the bottom clip you can see the transition between the blur and the normal clip is not as extreme. This is one of my favorite effects to add to my color corrections as I think it brings a lot more focus to the actual gameplay itself. If at any point during the process you want to see what the changes you've done have actually made then you can come down here and just hold the show snapshot button and it will show the image that we took earlier using the camera button. So if I hold this you'll see that's what it looked like before and that's what it looks like now. This is very extreme but of course we can reduce that later on if we feel like it but I quite 
quite like some of my color corrections to be a bit more off the wall a little bit more out there and stand out in my edits so you can see before and then after so next effect i recommend adding is a vignette so i'm just going to come back up to the color correction layer and i'm going to add a vignette search for it cc vignette and click that and you'll see it's going to add this sort of darkness around the edges i quite like the default settings but if you want to increase how dark it gets you can do that as well as the angle but i quite like to leave mine on the default so you can see before we had the vignette and afterwards and it just goes along with that blur quite nicely and i'm going to leave that like that and that's pretty much all there is to the vignette and now comes the glow so you're going to come back to your adjustment layer and you're going to search for glow and you'll see effects glow you're just going to add that and it's going to add this sort of glow to your clips the settings that i use is a glow threshold at 60 a glow radius of 100 and a glow intensity of 0.2 these are normally the settings that i use so you can see before and after before and after it just adds a bit more glow to the brighter parts of the image so the sky for example and i think it just adds a little bit extra to the color correction that wasn't there before of course you can change these settings if you like but these are the ones that i use as well as the the colors that it uses as well and that's pretty much all the effects that i add to my everyday color corrections i'm now just going to go over a few extra ones that you can use if you feel like it but for just a generic color correction these are the effects that I recommend you use. In some edits, you'll see the editor uses an effect called leave color, and I'll show you what that looks like. So if I add the leave color effect to my adjustment layer, and I come up here and I see color to leave, you can hit the little eyedropper, and you can pick a color that you want to keep in your image. So for example, if I take the purple of this smoke like this, and I eyedropper that, and you can see the amount of decolor, I can drag that up, and it's basically gonna make everything else discolored except for the thing that I've selected. And then you can increase the tolerance a little bit maybe not quite that much but drop it down a little bit there you go you can see we'll just make the smoke so it's visible and then you can drag the edge softness up a little bit as well and you can see you can just pick certain colors in the image that you want to keep so there you can see i've kept the smoke i could adjust this color to be on the box for example and you'll see now only the box is colored and you can just experiment with this effect um, and bring a little something extra to your edit so it's quite useful if you've got a black and white edit and you want to just highlight the reds for example like if you get headshots you see the blood coming out uh, you can just highlight and focus on those or if you have a golden gun for example you could just have that colored and things like that it just saves you having to rotoscope it out and then layer it on top or mask it or anything like that you can just pick the color and have it just show that color i've only used this a couple of times i don't usually get on with it that well but if it suits your editing style then go for it and another effect you can add is called tri tone so if i click my cc and i add the effect tri tone there you go you can see right there you can now basically pick three colors for your image so if i want to make the highlights say for example blue i want to make the mid tones red and i want to make the shadows green i can do that absolute hideous color combination but if you want to uh, you can do that it may suit some sort of 90s retro edits for example but of course you may not want to go this crazy with the color with the color options you could go with say a light blue for the highlights a slightly darker blue blue for the midtones and an even darker blue for the shadows and then blend it with the original something sort of like this maybe quite nice it really depends on what kind of edits you're making of course my color correction is predominantly red at the moment so mixing blue with it probably isn't the smartest idea but you can create a nice effect with it if you want to play around with that and now the next few effects i'll show you are basically the same ones that have been included in lumetri color so you can see we've got the exposures the contrast highlight shadows whites and blacks you can of course add all of those individually if you want to so for example if i wanted to change the exposure i can come to my adjustment and search for exposure drag that on and increase the exposure in fact i actually think that looks i think that looks a lot better when it's when it's more exposed you know i'm going to keep it like that and then you can also add say brightness and contrast which we've already adjusted a bit but you know if you wanted to increase the brightness and increase the contrast as well then you can do that i'm actually not going to bother with this one as i think it's really saturated as it is and i don't really need to bring any more attention to that as well as human saturation which again is also included in lumetri color but if you want to change the overall color of the image for example you can come down here and tick colorize and then you can drag through where it says color hue drag this degrees and it's going to cycle through all the different colors and you can drag the saturation up as well and sort between basically every color in the spectrum and color your image that way if you want to as well as completely drop the saturation if you want to have a more black and white clip and finally another effect which you can add which is also in lumetri color already is vibrance and if you add that you can see it's just going to increase how vibrant the colors are and then the saturation is also part of this effect as well so if you want to go completely crazy then you could for example you could keyframe the saturation on each kill or the vibrance or vice versa 
um, but obviously I wouldn't recommend keeping this like this all the time as it's a bit crazy. And that's pretty much all the free effects in After Effects that I recommend using for your colour corrections. So now what I recommend you do is go back through your clip and make sure that the colour correction looks good at different points in the clip. You know, it may look good here, but if you go back and see that maybe it gets too dark or it's too bright or something like that, you can always go back and adjust it afterwards. So for example, right here, I quite like the look of this omen where it's quite, it's bright blue and it stands out from the rest of the image. I quite like that. So I think I'm gonna keep it and I'm quite happy with this colour correction so far. If you ever get to a point where it starts to look like this again, that's probably because your adjustment layer is not above the clip. Anywhere that the adjustment layer is above the clip, it will apply the CC. So I can drag this over here and you'll see now it's above the clips and it's gonna apply that CC. This is quite useful to put different adjustment layers above different clips if you wanna have different CCs on different clips or if you wanna keep the same one, you can just drag it across your entire edit. And another thing to note, if you're using the blur effect like I showed you, you're gonna to want to make sure that both of these layers are in the exact same position as each other. So if I move this bottom layer across like this, you'll now see that the blur and the actual gameplay are not in sync with each other. So what I'm gonna do is just make sure that if you're gonna move one clip, you select them both and move them together and that way the blur will always match up to the clip on screen. Now, if you feel like your color correction is too intense, there's no need to go back and change any of the effects. As we did it on an adjustment layer, you can just adjust the opacity. So in order to adjust the opacity, just select the adjustment layer, press T on your keyboard and it'll bring up this opacity option and you can just drag it down and you can see if you make it zero, it's the normal clip, make it 100, it's the full CC and you can just drag it down to a point that you're happy with. So for example, I could drop it down to 66. You can see the intensity of the CC is greatly reduced and you can just find a point that you're happy with. So for example, I think 100 is a little bit too crazy, but I can drop it down to something like say 75. So I've got three quarters of it still there and I think something like that looks quite good. So I'm gonna leave mine just like that. And that's pretty much all there is to making color corrections in After Effects the free way without using any plugins or anything like that. Of course, if you wanna check out my other video where I used a plugin called Magic Bullet Looks, then check that out. It'll be linked in the description as well as the end card on this video. If you wanna check out any of my other tutorials when it comes to Valorant editing or just editing in general, then there'll be a playlist linked in the description. You can also find them on my channel as well. Make sure you follow me on my socials at RocklandVL on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram for extra content and updates on the channel. That's pretty much it for this video. I'll catch you guys in the next one.